Horsemen say that if you took one ride in a Kentucky spring seat saddle, you'd never want to ride it in anything else. In his Owensville shop in the late 1800s, Eugene Minihan began building saddles with hinged saddle trees that flex with the horse's movement. He also sewed an elaborate quilted pattern onto the saddle seat, which made his saddles instantly recognizable. Kentucky spring seat saddles, or many hands as they're known today, are still highly prized and highly praised. It was once widely recognized as the most comfortable saddle in the world. Despite its reputation, however, the Kentucky spring seat saddle nearly disappeared from existence when cowboys popularized the western saddle. Today, original saddles are sought by collectors and intrigue surrounding Eugene Minihan, the saddle's innovator, is greater than ever. Sadly, there's not a lot known about Eugene Minihan or any of the other saddle makers who worked from the late 19th century into the early 20th century. Nobody was around chronicling what they were doing. They didn't keep a lot of detailed records because they were, they were doing a job every day. They were just going out to a shop and earning a living. But they became some of the best saddle makers uh, that you would ever find, and the most well-known of those makers is Eugene Minihan from Owenville. He grew up in Nicholas County, adjoining us about 20 to 25 miles from here on a farm. So he was pretty local. When he was 14 years of age, he left Carlisle and moved to Covington, where he crossed the river every day to work out an apprenticeship in Cincinnati, learning how to make saddles. I think he came from Covington, moved down here, and started a business uh, over on Jefferson Street. There were several men, they were all leather crafters, and he produced uh, a lot of things. Everybody in those days was a horseman, of course, of, of some extent. You had to drive a buggy or be hauled around, one or the other. He is credited with coming up uh, with what we call a spring seat saddle. He learned that he, he could take a tree, the frame that the saddle built on, cut a piece of the branch out and replace it with a leather hinge and the saddle would be flexible. Today they're called flex trees. Uh, but he was the first guy as far as we know that came up with this idea. Being a farm boy, he knew that saddles could be kind of um, uncomfortable if you rode all day in them or whatever. So he decided to make the saddles to fit the seat of the person using them instead of the back of the horse. He didn't want to just make a saddle and say, come in and buy it. He wanted you to come in and he wanted to see your frame, your build, and then he would build a saddle that he thought would fit you the best and fit a horse the best. And this particular saddle, it's not a mini hand, but it's a Kentucky stitch seat saddle, and it's a great example of the stitch seat saddles. Just about all the seats had a quilting pattern, and each saddle maker usually had his own pattern that a lot of times they stuck with for years and years. Mr. Minihan seemed to use more than one pattern. Of course, the quilted seat is particular to a Kentucky stitch seat saddle or some of the plantation type saddles. There's some cushion and you really appreciate that on a long ride. Some people might think, well, that's just a decorative part of that saddle, but it's not. These little raised places will let some air under there, which causes it to ride cool. It also gives some texture that you can ride against that'll keep you secure in that saddle. It's not just a slick seat you've got a texture to move against. So yeah, there was a purpose besides just being beautiful, but when you get them done, I think they are beautiful. The uh, quilting pattern is kind of referred to as trapunzo, where it's quilted and raised a little too and a very pretty design. And it would have made any quilter very proud. 
They're works of art. Minahan probably never had anything like this to use. He probably had a almost a regular sewing machine to uh, do his seats with because the leather on the seat's not very thick. His wouldn't have had this feature. This machine has a head that'll turn 360 degrees, so you can make almost any kind of a pattern you want to make, any kind of circle you want to make. And if you look real careful when you take one of these seats off and you look look examine it carefully, you see little holes here. You have no idea how long it took me to find those holes because I didn't know how they got this cotton in here. One day, I turned the seat over and suddenly I saw something that I'd never seen before, these little holes. So they just punched the holes and he started stuffing it with the cotton. And after he got it done, of course, he was ready to put the seat on his saddle and stitch it down to the skirt that was there. He was a pretty sharp guy. He was, he was in the advertising business as well. He always had in the Owensville Outlook, the right hand, upper right hand spot every week. Had a different little ad every week. Yours for the best saddles and harness, Eugene Minihan, Owensville, Kentucky. Mr. Minihan was a marketer, that's for sure. When you read those ads, say, I, I sell cheaper than anybody, but my quality is the best, and I guarantee them. You got to remember, he didn't just make saddles, he made harness and bridles and uh, almost anything that was leather good that was related to using horses, this fellow was good at and he made them. And yeah, he took out ads in the paper and he, he wanted people to know about his shop and why his saddles were superior to other saddles from his point of view. In 2019, the Kentucky General Assembly designated Minihan's Kentucky Spring Seat Saddle as the official saddle of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, cementing its place among horsemen as the best riding saddle ever made. I think Mr. Manningham is getting some well-deserved recognition. As I say, these guys didn't think themselves of doing anything special. They were going to work every day to produce a product. And I think a lot of the other saddle makers who came along after him probably learned from him. So it's, it's good that we might try to uh, establish a legacy, especially for Mr. Minihan, because he did so much to promote these saddles.